Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt, back with part two of my ITAP bottle filler review. In the uh, first video, I reviewed just the basics, uh, the basic features of the ITAP, um, some of the benefits of using ITAP when bottling beer, and then uh, last but not least, who the ITAP was built for, because it's not necessarily for every uh, body out there. In this part of the video, I'll show you some things I had to do to uh, get it to fit on my on my keg fridge, certain uh, splitters and different attachments I had to add. And then we'll run it through its paces. First we'll do a water check, make sure we had no leaks, and then we'll come back and actually use it to bottle some beer. And at the end we'll come back here to kind of recap and I'll give you my opinion on the ITAP. But first, let's head down to the keg fridge. All right, so the first thing we need to do to set up our tap handle is actually take away the old tap. Now I've already removed the handle and you could use a crescent wrench like this on this little faucet, but you don't want to, it'll, it'll ding it up and damage. If you can, if you had either, it came with your keg fridge or you find a local homebrew shop, a faucet wrench, there's just these little notches here and that just makes your life easier on loosening them. All right. All right, there we go, going the wrong way. All right, now we got that loose, we've got our faucet loose, and next you'll need to go in on the back side here to loosen the washer. Remember this is connected to your beer tube, so you don't want that falling all the way down, but the next step is to loosen Loosen the nut in the back. Now you might have to, they have a specialized wrench for that. Uh, it's the back end of this called the beer shank. There's special nut attachment. You could use these to get in there and get a quarter turn, make your life easier. I've already loosened this up a little bit. And so uh, next would be just to cut this off and we'll add our next attachment. But this is our first step, taking off this faucet. All right, so let's go ahead and put together the tap handle while we're getting everything else together. Uh, I'm going to put on the attachment for PD plastic bottles. That's what we're going to uh, demonstrate today on. Just put that little attachment on, make sure it stays on. Uh, next, on the back side, we'll add our CO2 in little nozzle. We'll add our gas or, or uh, excess CO2 out. And then we'll put in the back side of the beer shank. Actually, you'll want... The longer end to go in, yep, just like that. The uh, back side of this beer shank, we're going to put a nipple on for the beer in line. So we're going to cut this again, reclamp it to this, and then you'll have this big nut. In the back so we'll be going in like this I wanted to shoot it like this just so you kind of get a visualization because it's kind of hard to see deep down inside but this is gonna be on the inside of that so we've got the tap assembled let me finish cutting my line here and then attaching it to this and then uh, we'll be ready then after that to come back and attach our lines to the tap all right, one of the modifications we're going to have to do to our keg fridge is because we're going to run CO2 up to our tap handle because we want to flush uh, the uh, CO2 uh, in the bottle. 
we're going to have to put a splitter because right now our CO2 just runs out of our tank in, into our keg. So what you need is one of these little T bat or little T attachments to where uh, I'll cut the line here, put this in, and now I can run CO2 to both the keg and to the tap. So let me put that on right now. All right, here's my finished uh, product here, little T attachment. Um, we still have our gas going into the keg fridge, but now we've got this line running up to the tap handle and we're still connected back to the tank and regulator. All right, gang, so we've got everything set up. Uh, one thing I'm gonna tell you in advance on this is be prepared to uh, do some backward engineering or, or just be prepared uh, to be a little flexible on installing this. My original plan was to put this into the beer tower. However, I'm just, this beer tower is too narrow. I was not gonna have enough room. So I kind of adapted um, something here. Now, uh, ITAP sells specialized beer towers. So if you're wanting something like that, uh, you know, check it out on the website. They have specialized beer towers that are designed for this. I try to do this again just kind of on my own and a lot of you may be faced with the same thing um, now if you're just going with a straight jockey box build or you built your own keyser this a little easier install like I said I was trying to throw <laughs> fit it on my old keg fridge so it was a little tougher build um, just want that little note so be prepared to make a trip to Lowe's or Harbor for additional stuff and when you're at Lowe's, one thing you will need to get for sure is some of the seal tape uh, just to tighten it up. I should have everything set. This is going to be our water check. Where I'm just running water through the system. Been a while since I used this keg fridge. So great way to clean out. And again, just uh, get to see our, uh, our bottler in action. Let me go ahead and put the bottle in. Clamp down. We'll give her a little flush. See, that's the flushing of the CO2. And then we'll... All right. You may see it's filling from the outside down. And here you can kind of tweak the flow rate however you like. Uh, right now it looks like we don't have any leaks. All right. So just a little bit of water here, just to kind of show you uh, the process. I'm gonna go ahead now and flush the rest of this uh, water out that I've ran through to clean the line. And we'll come back, I do have some beer that I'm, I'm putting in a keg. We'll come back to do a proper bottling, but you wanna do a water check first, just to make sure you don't have any leaks, issues, what have you. Practice controlling your flow rate, but we've passed the water test time to bottle some beer all right gang here's a moment of truth I've changed the uh, attachment head so we can do these uh, 12 ounce regular glass bottles uh, I've got my bottle sanitized I've got uh, sanitized caps here so we're ready to run I've got beer in the keg so we're ready to run through the process let's go ahead lock this down we'll give a quick flush and let's pull the handle. All right. Start to fill nice and slow. Make sure, yep, we have this nice and sealed. Don't want any leaks. One thing you can tell, there's really not much foaming while we're filling, which is nice. A um, couple of quick things you, I want to note. On the pressure on the back, your pounds per square inch on your CO2, normally for a regular tap fridge or even a full-blown cake system like you would have in a bar or arbor, roughly 10 to 12 pounds of pressure is about right. They recommend you for bottling filling only about 4 or so pounds of pressure so a little less you want to regulate that on your back either through your regulator or I have a valve near that T attachment 
I've put there. So just keep track of that. All right, we're getting close to the top here. That's good. We'll give her one little flush of CO2. Then And we are capped. Our first bottled beer with the ITAP from Bull Owl. So with that, let's take this beer and wrap up. All right, to wrap up, let me give you my take on the ITAP bottle filler. I think it's a really cool idea. Uh, some neat features in there. It's definitely the next step up if you're a serious home brewer. Um, I like the idea of flushing the oxygen out of a bottle. Um, again, this is stuff that the average person doesn't think about, but if you're really taking beer seriously, these are the things that take your beer to the next level. And I really like that. Um, the construction seemed quite sturdy. Um, again, who this is made for, I think this is a great product. Uh, again, the serious home brewer and the small startup brewery, nano brewery, microbrewery that is selling most of its beer through its tap room that has not yet developed a canning system or a bottling system. Um, but as, as I talked about in the first video, obviously this last year's taught us you have to have a plan B. And I think ITAP offers that to these uh, microbreweries because again, you're not breaking out a lot of equipment to, to bottle. Um, again, if you want to start selling bombers over over the counter or out the door. Uh, ITAP also sells a separate uh, growler filler, which is a cool attachment. Um, again, overall, I think a really cool product that uh, is perfect for the serious home brewer and the small craft brewer. Um, would, uh, now, is this something I would necessarily purchase I'm on the borderline. I, I do a lot of home brewing. I haven't started doing competitions, but if I start doing competitions, I will be glad I had this tool. The average home brewer, I'm not too sure because again, the average home brewer may or may not have gotten into kegging their beers, having a keg fridge, stuff like that. Um, you do need some kind of kegging system just to even attach this onto. So maybe for the new new brewer, might not be an option, but again, once you get into serious home brewing, you're probably already kegging, you're already either got some kind of keg fridge or built a keyser, a jockey box, something like that. Which is what I want to talk about next. The, I guess, if anything, I had to, uh, if, if I could talk to the folks at ITAP through this, that I would suggest is, uh, again, for the Syria, for the craft brewer, for the microbrewery, nanobrewery, whatever, they obviously have the build out to support this uh, unit. It, it works, you know, perfectly fine. The hardcore home brewer again probably has a keyser box, or a keyser or a jockey box. Um, but I don't know if the average home brewer is going to have the equipment uh, for this. One of the things I would suggest to ITAP is. I had to modify uh, this. I really thought I could get this to fit inside my tower. I know ITAP sells towers, but towers may not, a new tower may not always be an option. So I had to kind of build a rig. Um, I found a plate that they use to drill various size holes, a middle plate. I found it at Lowe's. And so it, it had the hole, the diameter, just perfect enough for that uh, beer shank to go through. Not everybody, I, I noticed the videos on YouTube uh, doing reviews on this, and a lot of people kind of had to come up with ways to mount it. Um, if I could convince folks at ITAP, you might want to sell a mounting plate. Because, uh, again, if I'm putting this on a keyser or jockey box or, or a full-blown brewery, I, I'm not having that issue. But if this is something that, uh, if they're trying to get to the home brewer, you might want to sell that kind of plate. Also, too, I would suggest... ITAP might want to sell to the splitter because you're going to have to split your CO2 line. Again, most of these uh, keg fridges, and even again, if you buy a jockey box or if you've originally made a jockey box or a keyser, you're not splitting, you, you don't have a split in that CO2 line, so you're going to have to create a split. They might want to sell that 
that might be an option on, on a you know an attachment to sell because that is something unique about the ITAP is again that CO2 line in to help you flush out. So those are a couple of things uh, I think ITAP should consider. I don't think it's anything again if you're a hardcore home brewer or a nano brewery. I don't think that's going to stop you. Uh, real quick. Final thing, would I buy it? Absolutely. If I was running a small brewery right now, I'd absolutely, because again, that versatility with that G connect on there, that again, you're not dedicating that tap just to bottling. You can use it to bottle or dispense regular draft beer. I think that kind of versatility is absolutely great for small breweries. So I definitely would, if I was, was a brewer, I would definitely purchase the product. Like I said, maybe not for the new brewers, and I have a lot of you on my channel. So if you're if you're still in the Mr. Beer kit kind of phase, I don't know if it's something you'd buy, but the hardcore home brewers and the small commercial brewers, absolutely. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the ITAP, I will leave the link to their website down below. And if you're interested in purchasing the ITAP, I will leave one of my affiliate links down below. If you click on that, it does benefit the channel. And I thank you in advance. So with that being said, uh, let's try the, one of the beers that I uh, bottled earlier. All right, so we got a little hiss. It kept a decent, kept a good amount of our carbonation. I, I'd had that beer sitting around for a little bit, so let's give her a try. Oh yeah, no, no, that is nice. Yeah, still plenty of bubbles on my glass, so it did a good job of uh, keeping carbonation. Again, overall, like the product. And I hope you like this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.